Thanks for joining us for this morning's time of worship with the Twickenham Park Open Bible Church here in Jamaica. We pray that you'll be blessed and encouraged by what is about to be shared. Good morning, everyone. How are we? God is a good and faithful God. We come here this morning thinking about all of what we have passed through this year. People have passed through grief and illness and disappointment. Some have not made it. Some are not mindful of the Lord's goodness to them. Our being here this morning is testimony to the goodness of God. We have a lot to be thankful for. Psalmist David, Psalm 36, says, Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that has brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the of our Father's love.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Think about his love, his goodness, his grace that brought us through as high as the heavens above. Father's love towards us. Oh, love of God, so rich and pure. Hallelujah. So measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Hallelujah. Isn't that something to be thankful for this morning? It is the love that has brought us through. And his love will continue to bring us through. Is there a hallelujah in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Let us shout thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, let praises rise from the inside this morning because I'm sure all of us have things to give the Lord thanks for so let us not keep it let us give it to him because he deserves it this morning hallelujah hallelujah this is a reflective morning it's a morning that we can reflect on all that has happened I mean we might not remember everything but those things that are significant we are going to recall them this morning. And I'm sure that every single thing, good or bad, God is worthy of being praised. Hallelujah. 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 So I want us this morning to open our hearts, open your minds, reflect, and then let's give him praise for all that he has done. Not only because this is the last day in 2023, because God is good to us all the time. New year, old year, any time. He remains good. He can't be anything else than good. That's his nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we bless him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We begin this morning with the goodness of the Lord. Something that I think all of us can attest to this morning, the goodness of God to every single one of us. Hallelujah.
come on, you should be making more noise in this place. Hallelujah. Joyful noise. Joyful shouts. Joyful shouts of appreciation for what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. morning. We come to rejoice in his goodness. We come to rejoice in his awesomeness. Yes? So let's not hold back what is due to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give unto the Lord. O ye people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The word of God says that. Let's do that this morning. Hallelujah. So not only is God good, not only is he awesome, he's more than that. And because we are aware of that, then we continue to chase after him. In the same way that he runs us down to bless us, we want to in turn chase after him. So this morning we're going to sing, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, more and more and more. Hallelujah. 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 H
to do and it's the only way that we are going to experience him more and more so look here you and I can come to praise and worship and we love praise and worship and we sing the song them with every gift that we have and we dance like David and if there is nothing to hold that if there is not the reading of the word if there is not time spent in prayer then you cannot bother I just emotion that. I just emotion that. What we want this morning is for people of God, when you ingest and digest the word, it comes out in your life. It comes out in your conduct. It comes out in your behavior. When you come anywhere you go for praise and worship, you can't praise the Lord with all of your heart because it's not coming from a place of just being emotionally stirred. It's coming from a place of understanding. It's coming from a place of experience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you have not experienced Jesus this morning, thank you for participating in praise and worship. But what we're singing here now has no real value to you because it's not coming from a place of understanding. 
and a place of relationship with God. Hallelujah. 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 And so I want to talk to us this morning. The word of God says we must sing praises with understanding. Hallelujah. What you understand? Hallelujah. What about your life? What have you been experiencing that will cause you to lift up your heart with praise? There has to be something on the inside. And I trust this morning that as we come, God has been good. God has been good. And He's not good only because of the 31st of December. Him good all the time. Amen. I want everyone to testify this morning. Can anybody testify this morning? Huh? Can anybody testify of the goodness of God? Did you go to the doctor this year? Huh? How many times? Some of us have not gone at all. And if we do go, it's not for any adverse sickness. It's probably a checkup and everything was good. Not true. Amen. You don't have that to praise the Lord for this morning. Come on, church of God. You don't have that to give thanks for this morning. My God. My God. Some of us felt ill, but the miraculous hand of the Almighty God touched us, and we are here this morning. Isn't that something to praise Him for? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Some of us have experienced through the Word of God the depth of understanding of His Word. Yes, and that is something to praise Him for this morning. Some of us have seen changes in our lives as we read the word, as we digest the word, we see differences in our lives. Isn't that something to praise him for this morning? Amen. We don't only praise him for bread and butter. Huh? We don't only praise him for bread and butter. That is good. But there are many other things that we need to recall and praise the Lord for. The song Mantaros Riley said, the simple things, eh? are you blessing? Do you have anything to give the Lord thanks for this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Can somebody testify this morning? Hallelujah. Can somebody testify this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
king of creation. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation, who over all things so wondrously reigneth. Lord, we thank you this morning. You are our reigning king. This is the 365th day of the year 2023, and you have been our reigning king throughout, all through. Hallelujah. We give you thanks this morning, Lord. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord, the Most High, the King of creation. I don't know about you, you know, but me just feel excited this morning. You know, me just excited about the Lord this morning. When we look at what we have been going through, what has been happening all around us. And this morning, here we are, all of us are standing here this morning. Thanks to the grace and mercy of God, our Father, who has kept us. Hallelujah. We just praise you this morning, Lord. You are all together lovely. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and honor and majesty and dominion and power, Lord. It all belongs to you. Hallelujah. My name is Imogene Dunbar, and I will be your moderator for this morning. I just want to thank the praise and worship team for so beautifully and gracefully leading us into praise and worship this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we are going to go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to ask our Deacon Maurice Hamilton if he would come to the podium at this time to take us into the intercessory prayer. After which, he will be followed by our Reverend Everal Edwards with the welcome. Are there any spoken requests for prayer this morning? The Crookshanks family. Healing from surgery. Those who are recovering from surgery. Healing. For Sister Sterling, who is now out of the hospital. Any other spoken request? A sick husband? Any other? Prayer for our nation. A prayer for backsliders. And I must add to that prayer for our new converts as well. All right. Um, may I see um, your raised hand for those unspoken requests? Morning, church. I would like to also, I would like to have young people courting. Yes. Young people courting. Are peop and people also that, that engage recently. We could go to God in the prayers, huh? Father God, first and foremost this morning, I want to thank you for journey, a safe journey to this place that we can worship you. I want to thank you for the cool, cool breeze and the nice temperature out the door. I want to thank you for the stillness in the air as we arose this morning. Do a simple thing, Lord. We take for granted. We ask for your forgiveness. We want to thank you for the opportunity to worship you freely, openly. We are able to call any name in this sanctuary without fear, without looking over our shoulder to see if anybody will come, come, throw a bomb inside there or fire a shot inside of the place. That again we take for granted. This little rock, Jamaica, yes, it's not stable. Some people say it's not real. 
But to see the God we serve, we know you're real. I will know that anything that happened today, you know before. Your word tells us how we must look up and don't get worried, not get flustered. We must pray. Pray without ceasing and give thanks for everything. Not only what we think like we want to give thanks for, but we must give thanks for everything. And that means the trials, that means the tests, that means the cross is neighbor. Yes, Lord, we give you thanks. All them little things. We have a few petitions we want to put on your foot. We have sick people. Particularly, particularly this morning, we want to put the Cookshamp family before you. You know the situation. You know what they're facing. We don't have a clue. Most of us in here don't even know who named Cookshamp. But you, Lord, you know them by name. You know them by nature. You know them before they were created. And you are the way maker. You are the healer. You are the provider. So, Lord, we pray that they look up to you. We pray that they remember that you are the king of kings and the lord of lords and pour their hearts to you for whatever need they have. So hold out your foot, Lord, and we call it done. We put a sick husband before you. Once again, Lord, you know the situation. You know the situation. Whatever is going through, whatever was the diagnosis, the diagnosis from a doctor or two, you still in the miracle business. You still in the miracle business. So put him on your foot, Lord, and we'll call it done in your name. We pray for those people who went through surgery. Right now, they were successful. The doctors were successful. And the healing process begins. Once again, Lord, you made these bodies. And no scientist no know it like you. Many times, doctors and scientists are dumbfounded with some little things that you make happen with the body. Once again, Lord, we know that you are the creator. You are the art and finisher of every, every life. So, Lord, we put these people who are recovering at your feet. And we also pray that they remember to give you thanks. To give you thanks for that like a minor miracle of going under the knife, not knowing what it's not mean to them, and come back out alive and breathe in. Though they may be feeling some pain or discomfort, it's nothing compared to what you have done. I will call it done again, Lord, in your name. Lord. Ah, backsliders. Once again, this world, this world is like a little cube where everybody knows somebody. Even when they never meet face to face, this social media thing, this internet. Lord, these people who have backslide, slidden, at times it, it, it's not because they want to, it's because they are afraid to stand up, stand up strong on their own foot. Because of society and they want to fit in. But I pray, Lord, that you trouble their hearts and their minds this morning. And once again, remind them that you are the Savior. 
You came and you give your life for them. So they must also sacrifice whatever pleasure and seek you in spirit, seek you in truth. We pray that they may step forward, that they held us and people who are saved amongst them can help can help to guide Lord help to guide them back to your fold because your word again says iron sharp iron and none of us none of us Lord can do this journey on our own we all need brothers and sisters to help us to correct us So, Lord, you put those people before you. You know them. While well, they know themselves, you know them. And your Holy Spirit is nudging them and nudging them and they keep ignoring. But you're a God that never give up. Your arms are wide opening, wide open, waiting for them to come back to you. So we pray for strength for them this morning to step up and to step out and come back in your fold, get back to your house. We give you thanks to them, Lord, as we pray that you bless them and continue to protect them. We put the nation, Jamaica, before you. This little rock, at this time of the year, is a place of pleasure and fun. We pray that those who come here just for that will encounter somebody with your word. That word that will touch them and cut deep into their marrow and trouble their hearts and let them wonder and let them reflect and even turn to you as well, Lord. We put the leaders of this country before you. A couple years ago, we prayed that things would be exposed that is underhanded. And we stay right now like a church and see it happen. We keep praying for those things to happen, Lord, to be highlighted. Things that are, are not right. We know that they can't keep any secret from you. So Lord, we pray for them. We pray that they clean their fallow ground. We pray that they repent from their wicked ways. And we pray that they spend the money wherever they get it to spend. And spend it wisely. With the intention of better in somebody's life or the citizens of that community. We give you thanks to them, Lord, because are you put them there now? Are you put them there? Because they can't do it for their own. So you know every one of them. You know their heart. You know their plans. But ultimately, even though they plan, your will will be done and must be done. We give you thanks, Lord, once again for this liquor rock. We put the security forces in your hands. Once again, they are tirelessly working around the country trying to solve this murder, that murder, this robbery, that robbery. But the leaders of the force need to understand that without you, nothing can be solved. So we pray that they come to you, Lord. We pray that they come to you in spirit and in truth also, requesting your help 
At one time, a politician said, we need divine intervention to stop these murders here. But they are not seeking your intervention. Still, they use it, using it to do a sort of wrongs and mistreatment of the citizens of this country. We pray that, Lord, that they will come to their senses with your help, of course. We honestly pray that they come to you for your guidance and your assistance. So put it at your foot and we call it down in the name. Lord, we pray for the unspoken requests. You know the hearts of your people who has raised their hands, not wanting to voice their requests or their concerns. You know the reasons why. We will not try to understand. We will just leave it to you. Because once again, we know that you are the author and the finisher of everything, of our lives. You are the provider. You are the healer. You are the way maker. And without a doubt, when you do what you do, it is well done. So put all those requests before you in your name. And Lord, take over the rest of the service. Send your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide. And I pray that this morning that the speaker comes, the word will be clear. And you come with power, authority. And touch at least one soul this morning. At least one, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord, and we call everything that is placed at your feet this morning done in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Maurice. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you all. We want to welcome everyone worshiping with us this morning, whether in person or online via the YouTube channel. We especially want to welcome persons who are worshiping with us and it's your very first time. You've never been present in this church for worship. You have never joined us online before. If you are joining online, we're going to ask you to just drop us a note in the comments or chat so we can acknowledge you. And if you are here in person, we're going to ask you to stand. So our first timers, would you please stand? Ah. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. The, the, you, you, my, 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 my friend with the baby never got a chance to sit. <laughs> Any other first timer? No. We we have we have a little token up front here that we would like for you to to have to remember the visit. So if you don't mind, would you please come? It's in this little burgundy basket on my right here. We pray that as you worship with us, God would meet a need in your life. And more than everything else above priority, number one is that God meets a need in your life. And if you have no regular church home, feel free to make this your own. All right, let's put our hands together for them again.
anybody celebrated a wedding anniversary during the course of this week? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, Sonia and Robert, the hidden. And the smalls. We're going, we're going, to, we're going to ask uh, the couples who are celebrating or have celebrated a wedding anniversary, if you would come forward. We have a thing in here where we affirm at every opportunity we get marriage between one man and one woman as God ordained for the root, the foundation of human society. And we pray all the time, as much as we can, that God would strengthen your union. You know, I have a funny feeling that we might have to go back to the office. No? Yeah, good things happen at Christmas. Let, let's bow, bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you. Your word tells us that marriage is ordained, sanctified, set apart, and undefiled. Thank you, Lord God, for the commitment these men, these husbands, these women, these wives have made to each other. Thank you, Lord God, that you have made these unions such that those who are a part of them find much to be thankful for and much to celebrate this morning. I doubt that they are perfect, but they are ordained by God. I am confident, Lord God, that the desire to abide in the union, you will honor it you will cause, Lord God, that as they learn to love you and to receive your love, they will share that love with each other. So that what lies ahead will always be better than what has gone before. We pray, Lord. In the face of all of what is happening and the distractions and the temptations, you will continue to cement your people together to glorify you for their offspring and wider family and neighbors. You would make them, Lord God, to shine as examples. Just like how you love your church, these unions will glorify you. Hear our prayer, we ask you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We, we normally ask how many years, you see? So we're going to start on this side. <laughs> Brother Small, man, you look sharp. <laughs> Congratulations, sir, and, and Sister Camille. How many years? 28. All right. Robert, three years. Four. Four years. Congratulations to all of you. No, no, no. Hold on one minute. We have a little gift for you to, to help just, just to enhance the celebration. Congratulations to you. 
and let me take the opportunity to, to plug our couple's ministry. Amen? So, so listen out. When we invite you to couple's events, you don't have to, even have to be a member of the church. We just want to strengthen couples. Amen? God bless you. Now. Take care. Then we, we want to recognize, acknowledge Robert and Jackie Walker Johnson, who are visiting home. They, they live and work in, no, between Bahamas and Jamaica. Robert and Jackie, would you please stand? Yes, sir. Welcome. Welcome. And she is home, but not quite as far as foreign. We want to recognize our sister Latoya Wright. This is Javid? No? All right. Javid, stand up, make we see you no more. We welcome. And, and, and for those of us who don't know Latoya, oh dear. All right. Welcome. Um, good to have you. For those of us who don't know, well, let me stop. We have not had the privilege of our sister Brenda Veronica Grant being in church for a couple of months now. Uh, Brenda, it's going to discomfort you to ask you to stand so people know who don't know, get to know you. W would you please stand? All right. Tuesday evenings for the month of January, we are going to be spending in prayer. No Bible study, prayer. So on the 7th, the 21st, and the 28th, those Tuesday evenings are committed to prayer, corporate prayer. On the 14th is the closing night of our Deeper Life meetings. Remember that from the 14th to the 16th, Yes, the 14th to the 16th, we have four Deeper Life meetings with Bishop Dixon from Ecclesia Ministries. Sunday evening, we start at 5.30, Sunday evening the 14th. Monday and Tuesday, we start at 6.30. Please bear it in mind. We're trying to make it so that you don't have to go home and too tired to come back out. So you leave work, stop here, and then go home after the meeting. Reasonable? All right. And then on the 21st, that's Sunday the 21st, that means the Tuesday evening dates are really... It is the second, ninth, sixteenth, twenty-third, and thirtieth. Those are the Tuesday evening meetings. Please do remember, members, on the twenty-first of January, right after morning service, we're going to be having our annual members meeting and election of officers. God willing, next week, Sunday, you will hear who the candidates are for the different offices. God bless you. Praise the Lord. That was a mouthful. I hope we all got it and we will remember the dates and times that pastor spoke about. 
The songwriter says, his goodness is running after me. But I am always cognizant of the fact that not only does his goodness run after us, but it catches up with us. And this morning, I just want us, if we would just focus a little bit on the times when his goodness catches up with us. The times when we look at our tables, it is well set with our meals. Our cupboards are not bare. Our pocketbooks are not bare. There are so many things. We are in good health. We are experiencing peace. We are experiencing joy. All those good things, his goodness really catches up with us. There are so many of them. There are countless times. We, can't, we couldn't stay here this morning and count the times when his goodness catches up with us. And so as we go through the day, let us reflect a little bit. Even over this past year, the times when God's goodness and grace was so um, before us, so strong, so, so, just so unavoidable. We couldn't do otherwise but just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, hadn't it been for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, your goodness. Where would I be? What would I be doing? Let me tell you, man, his goodness, his goodness is always there. Thank you, Lord. At this time, I'm going to invite Matthew Thaxter to come to us to read the morning's lesson, which will be taken from Philippians 3 and verse 1 through 11. He will be followed by the praise team, and then after that, Sister Garcia Brown will come to do the morning's announcements for us. Good morning, everyone. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word, which is taken from Philippians 3, 1 to 11. I'll be reading from the NIV version. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who are, are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic, righteousness faultless but whatever was to my profit i now consider loss for the sake of christ what is more i consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing christ jesus my lord for those for whose sake have i lost all things I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, and not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which is found through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Here's a reading from God's holy word.
the hymn, please. Uh, you will notice for those of us who are a little older <laughs> and we know this hymn, the words that I'm seeing now are a little different, but it ties in with the tune. So just take note and sing, all right? for today is Sunday, December 31, 2023. Tuesday evenings for the month of January are dedicated to prayer except for January 14, which is the closing night for deeper life meetings. 
The small edition of the Daily Bread is now available at a cost of $550. If you are interested in purchasing, please contact Sisters Claudette Hall and Juliet Richards or the church's office. Deeper Life meetings, which Pastor mentioned before, will be held here on Sunday, January 14th to Tuesday, January 16th, and that's in 2024. Services will begin as follows. Sunday, 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. So the services will, will um, commence as follows. 7 a.m. on Sunday and 5.30 p.m. Monday and Tuesday will start at 6 p.m. Now we crave your prayers for these meetings and we are asking everyone to be in much prayers for these meetings. All are invited to each Wednesday morning prayer and fasting service. We start at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you all. Our invitation remains open to place toll retreats, food items, and or non-perishables in the caring hands container provided at the entrance to the sanctuary. Recall Acts 20, verse 33, which states, I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And even though we are moving away from the giving season, Christmas season, remember the needs still exist. So we invite everybody to remember the Care Enhanced um, box. These are the announcements for today. Have a good and productive rest of the day. At this time, our pastor is going to come back to us to make some presentations. And after the presentations, children 12 years and under will leave for um, Children's Church. We have a few, four, no, five members who were not present on the evening of the anniversary dinner, who have been members of the fellowship for the 25 years of our existence here at Twickenham Park. These are persons who came over as members from the Kingston Church. I'm going to ask them if they could just meet me in front of the palm here, because we would like to give them, present the little memento, the token marking the 25th anniversary of our service. The names are, the persons are, Veronica Grant, Jennifer Gordon, Claudette Hall, and Isolyn Samuels.
Sister Claude et al. My, my apologies for this. Sister Brenda got her gift, her token, last time we, we visited with her. You must, you must forgive me. I, 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 I did not remember that. I wasn't on the visit, by the way. All right, Thir children 12 years old and younger, time for children's search. We want to talk this morning, by the grace of God, about being mindful of what matters. Being mindful of what matters. And the, the focus of our meditation is Philippians chapter 3 from verse 1 down to verse 15. And for a reference, Jeremiah chapter 35. The passage, Ephesians chapter, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8 was read earlier, and we are not going to, to read Jeremiah chapter 35, but we make, we're making heavy references, drawing heavy references from them, that, that chapter. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, Thank you for your faithfulness in preserving us as your people, day after day, year after year. We prove your faithfulness. And our, faith, our recognition of your faithfulness is not just because we live long, or we have this, or we have that. We recognize your faithfulness, whether we have or we have not, because it's you who are preserving us through every situation. And so we ask you, as we reflect on a year past and as we contemplate the year ahead, that our focus might be in the right place because that is the desire of our hearts this morning, we ask you by your Holy Spirit to speak your truth to us. Truth that will sustain us when things get nice and truth that will sustain us when things are not so nice. We want to be faithful to you regardless. And that is our desire this morning, that you would strengthen your people, 
based upon your word so we can be who you want us to be. Hear our prayer, we ask you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have heard, no doubt, some very chilling and surprising stories over the last couple of months, I dare say year. But I, I came across two items of news this past week that really caught my attention. First one in Florida, a 14-year-old boy kills his 23-year-old sister with, because of an argument over who got the most Christmas presents. And the 14 year old shot, no, the 14 year old shot his 15 year old brother, and the 15 year old brother shot him back. No, don't ask me how 14 and 15 year old have them one gun, but stranger things have happened. Then a, a mother of three had babies. One today and one tomorrow, the next day. Doctors said she had a unique situation where she had two wombs and she was pregnant to the degree and they don't call them twins because they come from separate wombs. So amazing things, good and bad, are happening around us. We hear and near to us of Guyana and Venezuela to Caribbean friends and people exercising military muscle. People are stressed about inflation and how it is impacting or has impacted their ability to enjoy Christmas. We know of war between Israel and Hamas. We know how that war is affecting and more likely to affect trade because countries who own shipping lines or the owners of these shipping lines are deciding not to go near the Red Sea because everybody is firing missiles that, will go, that is going to impact the price of goods because people are going to take the long route to deliver. All around us, we, 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 we know here in Jamaica the tensions about crime and violence. We hear the debates about who is fixing up parish boundaries to suit elections. There are tensions all around us. Well, Jeremiah was prophesying to Israel about 600 years before the coming of our Lord Jesus, his birth. And he was trying to get Israel to take heed that the reliance on false teachers and false prophets, their comfort with only being told what they wanted to hear by their priests, and them living according to what they thought was 
right in their own eyes and, and doing what was pleasing to them without any reference to God. He was warning them and pleading with them, take note of how you are living because it is going to result in serious judgment and bondage upon the land. And they didn't pay him any mind. It landed, well, at one point, them threw Jeremiah in the sewer. Next time, them boxed him. And he even ended up in prison because nobody was taking the word of God seriously. They were tossed by the tensions of the time in which they lived. And they never thought that Babylon, the Chaldeans under Nebuchadnezzar, would be such a serious threat to them because they're nice. In one of his messages to the people of Israel, God told Jeremiah to make reference to a group of Israelites who named, who were called Rechabites. They were led by a man named Jonadab. Rechabites in this day and age of seeming prosperity and ease for 200 years or more did not live in houses, they did not farm, they did not drink wine. And this family, by the way, the, the, this family was connected to Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. For 200 years or more, they were distinct because not only did they not build houses, they did not live in houses. And they took that course of action, that way of life, because Jonadab had told them, this is how you're going to live, conservative, simple, You're going to be an exception because everybody know how city life go. We know how ambition is. We want things. Jeremiah, as part of the word to Israel, invited members of the Rechabites to go into the prophet's chamber within the temple. And he set before them jars of wine and, and vessels from which to drink. And they told Jeremiah, no, sir, we're not into that. This is how we've been brought up, not partaking of any wine. In fact, they had come to Jerusalem simply because they heeded God's word through Jeremiah that the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, were going to attack and besiege Jerusalem. That is why they leave out the wild and come near the city, into the city. They resisted because they held true to the values of the family instilled in them from over 200 years before.
Paul, now writing to the Philippians. He is writing from prison. He is writing full of joy and enthusiasm and hope because he has heard and he has been blessed by the faithfulness and the zeal, the kindness of the Philippian church. The Philippian church is a Gentile church. We, we read earlier how Paul himself considered that he was a Jew of Jews, a Hebrew of Hebrews. But he had developed such a bond, a fondness, a love for the Philippian church. No, he's in prison. He's writing to encourage them. He's writing to thank them for their faithfulness in supporting him. But Paul is in a place where anything goes. The Romans consider themselves to be the ultimate in law. Their law goes against everything that we know God's word says. And this is the environment out of which Paul is writing to encourage his Christian brothers back in Philippi. Where Paul was and what he was seeing around him is not any different from the day and age in which me and you live. We, we're not so clear anymore as to what is wrong and what is right. Everybody does what everybody feels like. We're not talking about just plain human rights anymore. We're talking about individual rights. And can I just say to us that the Christian church is not removed from this? Because you can't tell some people anything about Bible in church because I know me see it. And, 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 and the institution is in danger of becoming more of a status occupation than being a living, dynamic, world-impacting, world-transforming, changing, living organism. Because it's what pastors say, it's what bishops say, that call the tune. And it's not just what bishop and pastor say, it's what me say. Pastor can't say anything he want. Every man is doing what is right in his own eyes. So with, with all of that confusion and tension, sister, the, the, the preacher this morning said, when we come to praise and worship, we come with out of a place of understanding so that when we praise and worship, it is not confined to 35 or 40 minutes on a Sunday morning. When we go home and the neighbor dog come to them thing upon the lawn, we still have praise and worship. Hello? the tensions, the stresses of our day and age, plus 
what we have in mind as unfulfilled ambitions just come to test how serious we are about pleasing God and living for him. You with me? It requires a personal resolve. Me and you must make up with mind that comes what may, we are going to please God. Wherever we are, regardless of the company, regardless of the occasion, we want to please him. And resolve is important and necessary. Don't get me wrong. But by our own strength, we can't please God. You could have good and strong and self-control a little more. Fiery darts are going to come at you. Hear Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Sorry, verse 4. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in his own ability, I more so. Because when it came to being a good scholar, follower, of the law. Paul was it. He said, I, verse 5, was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews concerning the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, and persecuting the church concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So if you're looking for somebody who qualified by reason of their resume, Paul is it. Him call himself blameless. If you talk about Pharisee, nobody no more Pharisee than me. Paul says, and yet still, with all the brilliant power and with all the willpower that he had, Paul says, I count those things as dumb. No. When me and you start put our aspirations, our ambitions, when we start to judge our success in life purely on the basis of how many of our plans have fallen into place, we are in danger. We are in danger of leaning upon our own understanding and ability when we are successful and achieve every one of our targets. And when we begin to question God being on our side simply because we don't have as much money as we had set out to achieve, we're in a predicament. Hello? We in a problem. We want to leave three things with us this morning. As we are, you and I reflect on the year that is ending, and as we make plans 
for the year ahead. Three things that we would do well to remember. One, we must put God first. Pleasing him must be our priority. Philippians 3, 7 and 8, Paul says, anything will make me look good, I have counted them as loss for Christ. serious thing that because me and you we, we identify our and, and we attach our standing and our value in life to what we have nine times out of ten hello oh, I may have my house may have my car I have my wife may have my children may have my degree may have this may have that People know me where I go, but make you ever turn up somewhere where nobody no recognize you. Hello? Paul says, whatever things I used to count as gain, I have counted them now as loss for Christ. Why? Verse 8. Indeed, I also count all things lost because those things can be compared to the relationship and the blessing I enjoy as a Christian in relationship with God. Him say, is excellence knowing Christ. Is excellence being known of Christ. And, and compare, compare Paul's resume that he is now counting as loss. Compare that with the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord. It is because of him and following him that what I used to boast about and take comfort in is because of knowing him and being known by him why these things now become dumb. It's a dangerous thing, brothers and sisters, when we start put pleasure and profit and power on the same level that we do level of importance in our lives as we do the relationship with God. Nothing, nothing must compare with that relationship. Put God first. Pleasing him must be our priority. All Paul is putting this is that if anything when threaten the relationship with God, let go of that thing. Secondly, not only do we put God first, we fight for following God is right. Fight. Moving down to chapter to verse 13 of chapter 3. He says, Is not that I have already accomplished what I want to accomplish in my walk with God? Brothers and sisters, reading from the Amplified Version here, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal 
to win the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. What I'm saying is that as long as I have lived and with all of what I have enjoyed, me still no reach yet. And I am where I am, not because I am comfortable now, it's the result of a fight. Anybody here has been through a week when you were not tempted to go against what you know God prefers for you to do? Anybody like that? Fight where fight. Choices come to be made. And we either choose to obey what is pleasing to the Father or we give in because nobody now see. Not only that, me and you must stop and take, pay attention to the fact that if we spend too much time looking back and looking back in misery and frustration. Boy, nothing has go on for me. Look how long me I pray about this and I'll know it not happening yet. God have a purpose and him have a time. Him not expecting you because him don't meet your timetable, you're going to go backslide. Or you will take things into your own hand and abandon what you know to be his will for your life. Paul says, it's not because I have already attained. I am still striving. But we are striving with the understanding that despite the failure, despite the frustration, God not done with you yet the disappointments that you are experiencing come to teach us some lessons. And if we are not quick and willing to learn the lessons, we have to go back through the process again. God wants to do a proper, complete work in me and you, each of us. So like the potter that Jeremiah speaks about, if you must make the clay into a vessel and the vessel look more like an egg when it should be looking like a ball, you must go make it over. The important thing in facing up to your disappointments and my disappointments is that we learn the lessons that are present in them. Me and you can't dictate to God how things must go. That is why we want to ask him, show me the way that you want me to go. And take the approach like Moses. If you're not going up with us, me now go. Third thing, don't forget the faithfulness of God. Put God first. Fight, because there is no better alternative than following God. And then don't forget the faithfulness of God in not leaving you out there on your own. Verse 15, Philippians chapter 3. All of us who are mature... All of us who are serious about our commitment to walking with God should have this attitude, Paul says. Then when you talk about mature, and you say, we must have this attitude. Because if you, in, in your mind and mine, if we're mature, then we reach. Hello? Paul says, we are pursuing the fullness of God's purpose for us. 
We don't want to be just content with serving God when things are nice. Praising God when we have certainty as to where the next meal is coming from. We should have this attitude that yes, I have not reached all of what I would like to reach. Yes, I have let my Lord down, but I'm getting up. I'm getting up because he wants me to get up. If any risk, and if in any respect, you have a different attitude to striving, to pressing, as long as you want it, God is going to make it clear to you. So that's not right. This is what I want. That's wrong. This is how you do it. Why? God will only work with the yielded life, the surrendered life. But nobody wants you to succeed more than him. Hello? He make himself available to us. The faithfulness of God is that nobody who comes to him is going to despise. No matter how weak and frustrated you might feel about where you are right now, on whatever level, whether spiritual, financial, personal, whatever it is, nobody wants you to succeed more than your father. And if you don't want to succeed, Paul prays, he encourages us, God will make it clear to you. Let's be mindful of what matters. Pleasing God, fighting, because we know it's so no better no day. This is the way, walk ye in it. We have the assurance that he is with us. He is not going to leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we ask you to arouse in us a spirit such as the Rechabites had, regardless of what was happening around them, they wanted to remain true to the values of the family. You are calling us to higher values more than just legalisms. You are calling us to surrender to the, to the Spirit. And His directing us according to your word as to how to live. Lord, teach us. Feeling helpless sometimes, feeling hopeless at other times. Frustrated even. Disappointed because we haven't reached all of what we planned to reach, what we set out to reach. You teach us the lessons. You give us, instill in us, the strength. Paul would go on to tell the Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whatever the struggles are for your people this morning in this place, I ask you, great God, to enable new desire, new strength. 
because you're not leaving us alone. And then teach us the lessons that we need to learn to become what you want us to be. If any of us have any mindset in this place this morning about other than wanting to please God, make it plain to us, we ask you. Show us how where we're going and where we're heading is not in keeping with your plan for us. So we can come back to you in repentance. We can come back to you in confession. Hear our prayer, we ask you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we close, you're here and you are not a Christian. You want to commit your life to Jesus Christ. Would you raise your hand if you're here like that? I'd like to pray with you. You're not a Christian, but you want to commit your life to Christ. Anybody like that? I'm not seeing a hand. Let's stand together. We close in prayer. I'm going to invite Minister Hillary to come and do the benediction for us. Praise God. Normally, we don't put our hands together for the pastor, but could we do so now? <laughs> Thank you, Rev, for having allowed the Lord to use it to bless us one more time again. And let us now pray the blessings of the Lord. May the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Father, rest, remain, and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Go with the Lord. And that's all for this morning's time of worship with the Twickenham Park Open Bible Church. We are located at Lot 17, Twickenham Park, St. Catherine, Jamaica. If you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to call us at 876-749-3061 or email hisworkmanshipeph210 at cwjamaica.com. For persons who would like to send an offering via online transfer or direct deposit, you may send to National Commercial Bank Account number 321-541-410. God's richest blessing to you and yours. Have a great week.